We shouldn't have to nag. What's up guys, I'm here on my channel Gear Inc. where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you. And on my channel, that's PC Tech, Games, and Gear. And before we get started, I've been on a bit of a hiatus celebrating the Labor Day weekend with my family and then my son's second birthday the weekend after. So I've been gone for a little bit. I appreciate your patience and I obviously I love spending time with my family, but I'm very glad to be making some content again. And today we're talking about something I actually care about because I want to hold companies, whoever they are, to account. So recently, if unless you've had your head in the sand, you may have heard that uh, world famous overclocker Debauer and Stephen Burke over at Gamers Nexus ran some different tests and found some interesting results when it came to Ryzen's boost capabilities. AMD has hopped on this pretty quickly because they recently had to pay out a bunch of money due to perceptually false advertising on the argument of whether or not their bulldozer uh, made claim, you know, bulldozer architecture made claims that really it couldn't live up to if it was a really innate core CPU, et cetera, et cetera, which you can argue left and right all day long. But we're not going to argue about that. We're talking about AMD's response to specific criticism because they don't want to pay out any additional money. So specifically, they're going to be reworking a BIOS update that is going to allow for better boost with their CPUs because right now people are not hitting their rated speeds, myself included. I usually only see even in single core getting up to maybe like 3.525 or 3.5 uh, 3.5.5 at like the highest on single core performance, I've never been able to hit 3.6. Now that's including having all the correct settings turned on and having my uh, 3900X water cooled. And so yeah, I'm in that camp where it's like 50 megahertz below the you know top boost. And I'm not really as hung up on that, but obviously the whole point of this is that if you advertise something, you need to fulfill on that. It shouldn't be just a, oh, this does this, and then it's like, yeah, it kind of does this. So AMD is gonna be releasing a BIOS update that essentially increases the thermal threshold um, more than anything in terms of like the bottleneck. Intel has been quick to hop on this saying that the problem with the Ryzen CPUs is that this actually can lead to degradation over time. AMD has firmly denied this saying that there's no truth to that. Although it should be pointed out that the new safe voltages for the new Ryzen CPUs are 0.25 less than what was the previous Ryzen. And there have been reports of pushing these CPUs and seeing degradation faster than in previous Ryzen generations as well. And so there may be a little silver truth to what Intel is essentially saying, even though obviously this is just a jab at them because AMD has been trouncing them pretty squarely. So that all aside, this BIOS update released today, but it's up to the manufacturers whether or not they're gonna implement it on their boards. Meaning, we don't know if this is gonna be across um, all motherboard generations or just with the newest ones. So you're gonna to have to check your own manufacturer's website in the coming months. Um, and you should see those updates within the next like two to three weeks on their BIOS updates. Now I fully plan on testing this myself, but one of the interesting things that I think is coming out of this are some other adjustments that AMD is doing with this BIOS update. So they're releasing a new software development kit that's gonna allow us to monitor things that are a little harder. A lot of the things that Debauer brought up, uh, brought up like specific voltages, junction temperature, et cetera, that are really hard to monitor right now. So they are gonna be releasing something like that. They're also gonna be messing with idle temps. As people have reported with AMD CPUs that essentially there are certain applications like internet browsing, for example, that is boosting and taking way too much voltage on the CPU itself. Like it doesn't make any sense. It should be a lower, obviously, power consumption when you're doing just background apps. And so that's something they're gonna work on as well. The other thing that I think is actually more interesting is they're going to be working on doing a Windows scheduler update. And this to me is huge. For the reason you don't, if you don't understand, Windows scheduler has had a hard time with Ryzen CPUs because it never knows which core, which group of cores to pick at any given time. It has a hard time keeping up with like which one is going the fastest boost. Now, if you're a gamer, this might actually have a significant impact because if Windows is able to better choose which group of cores or which core to use at any given time, that might result in some better gaming performance. And I'm actually interested to see how that effect takes place as well. So anyway, guys, my whole beef with this is that AMD should have been doing all this without you know, YouTube influencers essentially pointing out what they were doing wrong. Now, I'm not an AMD or Intel fanboy, but anytime a company obviously is held to account for their, you know, for their words, let's say, that's a good thing. And so I'm not hating on anybody here. I'm not even hating necessarily that hard on AMD. I'm just disappointed that it took, again, somebody kind of pointing out the problem for them to fix it. This should have been something they were working on all along. So anyway, that's my two bits, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go and leave me a big thumbs up. If you thought it was horrible, leave me a thumbs down. Remember to get subscribed and hit the bell icon and leave me a like so you know when these videos drop next. 
I'm gonna be probably redoing my wow ray tracing video, by the way. People pointed out that the depth buffer wasn't used, uh, working properly, and so you weren't really seeing real ray tracing, which is actually totally valid. I've been able to get it to work um, a little bit. I'm gonna go into that in another video. I don't wanna uh, go on about it in this one, but anyway, it, there's not a whole lot of result difference, but I wanna show that the depth buffer can work. I'm gonna continue to make these videos, whether you watch them or not, but I hope you do, and I hope to see every single one of you next time here on Garrett Inc.